Another function that's very similar to the reciprocal function is what's called the rational function. A rational function is going to be any function that has the form y equals p of x over q of x. It makes them look a little bit more intricate, a little bit more confusing, but if we use a sign chart to help us graph it, it's not going to be that bad. I'll show you how with this one. If we have y equals 1 over the product x plus 5 times x minus 3, we're going to use a sign chart to help us graph it. A sign chart is just a number line. This number line is our x-axis. On this x-axis, what we want to first identify are any asymptotes. And remember, asymptotes are going to happen whenever the denominator is equal to 0. So that's going to be whenever x plus 5 is equal to 0 or x minus 3. If x plus 5 is equal to 0, that means that x is equal to negative 5. And if x minus 3 is equal to 0, that means that x would have to equal 3. These are going to be where our two vertical asymptotes are at, at x equals negative 5 and x equals 3. So let's plot those two vertical asymptotes. There's one at negative 5 and one at 3. We're just going to identify them with two vertical dotted lines. Now, we've just broken up the x-axis into three specific intervals. The next step is to test each of those intervals. So just pick a number that's way out here. And it, all of these numbers are going to act the same, whether you pick negative 5.1, negative 6, negative 10, or negative a billion. I like taking something that's a very extreme like that negative a billion. Because if x is equal to negative a billion, I want to know the sign of each of these pieces. Well no, well, no matter what x is, 1 is always going to be positive. Now if x is negative a billion, negative a billion plus 5, that's going to be a negative number. And negative a billion minus 3, that'll be negative as well. So overall, this fraction is going to have a positive number divided by the product of a negative times a negative. Well, that means in my denominator, that'll be positive. The numerator will be positive, and positive divided by positive is positive. Now I'll move on to the next interval. Pick a number that's in between negative 5 and 3. Any one will do. They'll all act the same, so why not pick the easy one, 0? Well, if x is 0, 1 is still 1, and it's positive. 0 plus 5, that's turned to a positive number, and 0 minus 3 stays negative. So overall, my fraction is looking like positive divided by positive times negative. This will mean my whole fraction, since I have an odd number of negatives, is going to be negative. And all numbers on this interval will be negative. Finally, pick a number on the last interval. Obviously, I like the one a billion, a very big one. Plug it in to identify the signs of each pieces. No matter what x is, 1 is still positive. x plus 5, a billion plus 5, that's positive. And a billion minus 3, that's positive as well. So since every factor in my fraction is positive, every number on this interval will be positive. Now we have to just interpret what do all these positives and negatives mean as far as our graph is concerned. Well, as far as the graph goes, if it's positive, it's going to be above the x-axis. So on the, on the left-hand interval, I'm going to have a graph that will approach both uh, asymptotes off of, on the positive side. In the middle, there are three asymptotes I have to worry about. The one at negative 5, right here. The one at 3, my horizontal asymptote, at the x-axis. So, I just need to have everything happen below the x-axis, because everything will be negative, and approach all three asymptotes. So as I approach infinity over here, we'll get close to that asymptote, and we'll get close to that one. In the middle, we just won't cross the x-axis at all. Finally, on the right-hand side, we want our graph to be positive. So stay above the x-axis and approach both asymptotes. And there is a nice sketch of this graph. Let's try one more. Again, the first thing we need is our x-axis. 
on this x-axis, we need to identify all of the important points. And looking at my denominator, I have three factors, x, x minus 2, and x minus 6. Each of these three factors are going to give us another vertical asymptote. So I'll identify all three of them. x happens at 0. For x minus 2, the vertical asymptote is going to happen at 2. And for x minus 6, the vertical asymptote will happen at 6. Hopefully that's obvious to you. If not, what I'm doing is taking each factor and setting it equal to 0. So when x minus 2 is equal to 0, x equals 2. And when x minus 6 is equal to 0, x equals 6. And that's where I get all of my vertical asymptotes. Since they are vertical asymptotes, I'm going to separate them with dotted lines. And now it's time to test each interval. Notice that now we have four intervals, and that means four different things that we have to test. So I'm going to pick a number that's way out here, like negative a billion. Well, no matter what x is, negative 1 is negative. If x is negative a billion, then x is negative. Negative a billion minus 2 is negative, and negative a billion minus 6 is negative. Since there are an even number of negative signs, they all cancel each other out, and this fraction will be positive. Now I pick another number, probably 1. If x is equal to 1, negative 1 is still negative. 1 is positive. 1 minus 2 is negative, and 1 minus, five, 1 minus 6 is negative. Now looking at the overall fraction, I have a negative divided by a positive, so this fraction will be negative. Go to the third interval. Pick something in here, like 5. Negative 1 is still negative. If x equals 5, x is positive. 5 minus 2 is positive. And 5 minus 6, still negative. Again, we have an even number of negative signs, so the whole fraction will be positive. Lastly, pick something way out here, like positive a billion. Well, negative 1 is still negative. Positive a billion is positive. Positive a billion minus 2 positive, and positive a billion minus 6 is positive as well. Overall, I still got the one negative sign, so my fraction is going to be negative. After every interval is tested, now we can sketch things. Just sketch a branch either above or below the x-axis. Well, since the left-hand interval is positive, that's going to be above the x-axis. When it's negative, it'll be below and remember, get close to the asymptotes, but don't cross them. The next one is positive, so we'll be above the x-axis. And the last one's negative, so we'll be below the x-axis. Now, rational functions can get fairly complicated. I want you to know that for all of our purposes here, I'm going to try and keep them fairly simple. The numerator will always be just an integer. The denominator... That's where all of our factors are going to be. So the only thing we'll have to worry about are vertical asymptotes. By changing the numerator and messing with the denominator, we could change our graph considerably. And you'll see that when you go into pre-calculus and calculus. The only thing I want you to remember right now is to use a sign chart to help you come up with the graph and then let each branch approach the asymptotes.